to the Flats Class YouTube channel. Today we're going to have another episode of the Plantation Entails. Uh, my goal today is to reveal to you some of the stuff that I've been doing here lately that has worked out fantastic for catching trout, reds, and snook. And that's a new twist on the Texas rig. Okay, we're gonna talk about a Texas rig. So what I have is a five aught extra wide gap rigging hook. This one happens to be made by Mustad. It's a grip pin hook. It's out of the KVD series. Ahead of that, I've got a 1 8 tungsten bullet weight. The leader material in this setup is 30 pounds. The trick is to rig this bait because there's so much rock here and there's so many little prop roots we're going to be throwing around is to rig this bait so that you bury this line tie and this bead here deeper in the bait and that way you don't have the snag point that you would normally have so you can see i brought the hook through the bait so it's deep into the chin now i'm going to pull it back and i'm going to set it so that I got some room here. And what that does, and I do this with all my baits, is it gives me a little bit of a, a buffer here. You can see the line comes out the nose of the bait. It sets the hook a little further back in the bait. The bait's gonna have more of a horizontal fall this way. And that way when I run into things, I don't have that line tie or this part of the bait or the hook, the node, hooking up on anything. I can usually just tumble it right over. So this allows me to throw fearlessly uh, up into the prop roots of the red mangroves along a lot of this table rock and limestone outcroppings on these points without any fear of being hung up. One of the nicest things about being able to Texas rig is the fact that you can throw up on trouble. What I mean by trouble is rock limestone, oyster, and fish the lure off of it. This fish was posted up on one side of the oyster bar. I threw it across the oyster bar, swam it across there with very little fear that I'd get hung up. And as soon as it fell off the oyster bar, he clobbered it. Late spring, early summer, it is really hard not to want to throw a Z-Man kicker crab or throw the Z-Man jerk shad. Those two those two baits work so well, and they're born for Texas rig. Not the gi most giantest red, but you know, one that will do a great job for me. <sighs> I have seen so many fish this morning. It's so clear, it's a day after a cold front, unseasonably cold for this time of year. Um, but going to my go-to, which is that little bullet weight that, that kind of free rides up and down the leader. And that little Z-Man crab or that jerk shad, those two are go-tos. There's a number of baits or bait profiles that I like to utilize for this type of setup. Uh, I prefer the crab a lot because with that tungsten weight, I can keep this right down on the bottom because it kind of slides up and down the leader. Um, this crab just crawls along the bottom and if a redfish sees it or a black drum sees it, it's all over. You're going to catch them for sure. Um, but I also like to use the Z-Man Easy Shrimps. The 4-inch Diesel Minnow works well with this rig. Uh, the five inch jerk shad, anything that I can use a tungsten weight to keep it tight to the bottom. This is for these bright blue days when I'm not looking the fish up high. I want to drag it down on the bottom, but I don't want to get hooked up, snagged up where I'm breaking lures off. So I'm gonna rig this one, get it all set, and uh, get right back after it. Right in here, you'll notice that we have like an edge where you've got this kelpie grass and you've got this leafy grass. 
and then you'll see where the bottom is brown. There's a snook right there. He's cruising down the brown bottom. That's the rock. Where these two meet is where you'll find fish oftentimes. I'm going to work this edge uh, on a few blind casts, long blind casts, and see if I can't spook up a really solid fish. There's a nice little snook right there. I got a lot of fish moving in here. There he is. There we go. <laughs> what a fish. What a fish. I mean, that's a 30 odd inch snuff right there. And you can catch gorgeous fish like these. That Texas rig, that little tungsten weight, it allows you to make that long cast. And like I said, whether you're throwing diesel minnows, five inch jerk shads like the beer run there, the crab that caught the redfish today, you know, the shrimp, the easy shrimp, these are all profiles that game fish like this recognize. Now let me get this one unhooked and we'll get her back in the water. All right, the setup for most of this style fishing, it's all about the rod. Um, for me, I used two different setups today. I used a seven foot medium heavy fast action rod with the crab. And same thing applied for this, except for it's a little bit longer rod. So it does have a little bit softer tip. Um, this is more of a moderate fast. But this again is a medium action uh, and allows me to load up these tips pretty easy. But you've got to have that crisp tip when you are fishing uh, with, these, with these Texas rig baits because you've got to drive the hook outside of the plastic. A lot of the secret to this is burying that hook deeper into the plastic. So when I make those casts and they land up there tight to cover, or I'm throwing them out in the open over the shell bars and over the rock bars, even though I'm quite confident I'm not going to get hung up on the bottom or hung up in these trees, I also got to understand that when a fish strikes the bait, I'm going to have to come tight quickly and really drive the hook into their flesh so I can get it. That's why I'm using these 5 aught style hooks. These hooks are really big wide gap hooks. That wide gap hook is the true secret. Between that and where I put it in the bait, well, it's a difference maker as you move into the summertime and you're throwing tighter to cover. Hopefully, you guys learned something from this video that we did today, the Texas rig and how I've modified it just enough to make it really work for me here in the beautiful Crystal River. Now, if you haven't subscribed, we encourage you to subscribe to the channel because we can't take it to the next level without all of you being in the classroom.